Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Thursday, February the 8th. It is game day and tonight the Canucks take on the Tampa Bay Lightning for the second time in less than a week. Last Saturday, the Canucks dropped a very entertaining 4-2 decision to Tampa in Vancouver. Tampa went up to the 3-0 lead. The Canucks mounted a valiant comeback only to fall short in the third period. Then they played in Florida, the Canucks did, in front of basically no one and lost a stinker of a game to the Florida Panthers 3-1. So let's hope we get the Saturday night Canucks as opposed to the Tuesday night Canucks as they take on Tampa Bay once again. A few lineup changes. The most significant one is Anders Nilsson is in net. Jacob Markstrom's out. Nilsson hasn't played in three weeks. It feels like he hasn't played at all this season, but he, we know that Travis Green prefers Jacob Markstrom. So Nilsson getting in, having a good showing against a very strong team, and maybe a couple more good showings before the trade deadline of February 26. Perhaps the Canucks are looking to boost up his trade value. He would be great insurance for a team looking for you know to go on a playoff run or to at least fight for the playoffs. And at a $2.5 million salary, that's too much right now for him to be playing not even one out of every four games. So maybe Nielsen gets moved in the next two weeks. We know that Thatcher Demko is ready to go. He could probably step in and play now and do decently well and definitely be ready for next season. So Nielsen's in net. Let's hope he does well, not only for the team's sake, but perhaps from a future assets perspective. A couple of injuries. Sam Gagne, him, he, he got injured a, you know, a few games ago when he, he made that aggressive hit in Chicago, against Chicago, sat out a game, came back, and now he's uh, tweaked something, a lower body injury. So Sam Gagne is out. Also, Brendan Gauntz apparently left the practice, left Tampa Bay in a walking boot. So he's obviously out. So that's two guys out. That means two guys got to come in. Nick Dowd was a healthy scratch recently. He will draw into the lineup. And the Canucks have called up forward Reed Boucher from the Utica Comets. And he will be in the lineup as well. So again, Gagne and Gauntz out. Boucher and Dowd in. And the most significant transaction of, over the past day, the Canucks have signed and recalled Darren Archibald from the Utica Comets. Yes, Darren Archibald was playing in Utica without actually a pro contract. He played for the Canucks four years ago under John Tortorella, did okay in a, in a very short stint, then has been playing in Utica since then. But yeah, he actually didn't have a pro contract. So he has signed that pro contract. He's signed by the Canucks. He's now um, not waiver exempt. So once the Canucks bring him up, he has to pass through waivers to get back down because of his age. He's 27 years old. So look for him to stay on the main roster for the rest of the season. It's crazy. He's not playing tonight, though, because of immigration issues. It sounds weird. He's playing in Utica, which is the States. He wants to play in Tampa Bay, which is the States. So there's no border crossing. But I'm guessing it has to do with a new contract with a new employer or uh, the pro team, whatever it may be. So he will not be in the lineup tonight. But by it sounds like he's, the, he's planning to play when the Canucks play in Carolina tomorrow night. And here's the most important takeaway from the Darren Archibald signing. Yes, of course, he adds grit to the lineup. He's going to make the Canucks stiffer or harder to play against. All those things that we've been hearing and all the things that we need since the Canucks have lost Derek Dorsett and guys like Good Branson and Vertanen haven't really stepped up too, in too big of a role yet physically. They, you know, they're physical enough, but it could be more. So the Canucks could obviously add more grit to their lineup. Now, here's the kicker in a good way. I think the person that's going to benefit most by this is forward Jake Vertanen. And here's why. Yeah, you might think, well, Clay, that doesn't make any sense. Archibald and Vertanen play a similar line, a bottom six role, a similar role, I should say, a bottom six role, you know, uh, kind of hard to play against, intimidating, hit, uh, play big, all those kind of things. Vertanen has been up and down with those things as we've talked about before. But from a mentorship standpoint, I think this is the single most important thing that could, a uh, good thing that could happen to Jake Vertanen for the last third of this season. There's been a lot of talk about Todd Bertuzzi coming in and maybe mentoring Jake Vertanen. People are trying to draw comparisons between the two players. I'm not completely sold on that. And Bertuzzi is a few years removed from the game. Yes, he's got the wisdom and the experience, but he is removed from today's game. And I'm not convinced that that would be the best situation for Jake Vertanen. However, if Jake Vertanen can learn from, can be mentored by someone who's on the team right now, I think that's a much better fit. And that person can be Darren Archibald. And, here, and this, the reason why I say all this is because in the preseason game, when I met Jake Vertanen's parents, and I, you guys might remember, I actually bought a t-shirt of Jake Vertanen, not even knowing that his parents were sitting behind me. I came back to my seat and I was going through my, my stuff and Jake Vertanen's parents basically said, hey, uh, thanks for buying my son's shirt. And we, had a, we sat together in the entire game, obviously, and we, we chatted about his experience last year. They're wonderful people. And they said this, 
when Jake Vertan was in Utica last season after getting sent down by the Canucks, yes, he enjoyed, he actually enjoyed playing for Travis Green down there. He enjoyed the experience. He knew it was good for his, his career long term. But he said the single, the, the parents said that the single best part of that experience was playing with and learning from Darren Archibald. Basically, Archibald took Vertanen under his wing. He mentored him. He led him. He was an ear for him. He counseled him. And he was basically his big brother on the team. So there, there's no harm. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's, it's actually a, a really nice benefit now that Archibald is up on the big roster. And perhaps Vertanen didn't have that go-to person on the Canucks roster right now. Perhaps he didn't feel close enough to the Sedins or Erickson or Edler or any of the other locker room leaders. And maybe he was still trying to figure out where he fit with Bo and with Troy Stetcher and with Brock Besser, whatever the case may be. Now there's a, a mentor in the locker room that Vertanen has experience with, that he can trust, and that he can go to with his problems both on ice and off ice, or not problems, but his issues and concerns. And hopefully, for our sake, for the Canucks' sake, for Vertanen's sake, it then will translate into a stronger and more confident and more poised and more impactful game for him. So I'm excited. You guys know I'm a big Jake Vertanen fan. I, I so dearly want him to see him succeed. And maybe Darren Archibald could be the key to that success. Canucks fans, what do you think? Do you think I'm putting too much stock into this relationship? Or do you think that do you agree with me that this could indeed be a good thing for Vertanen as he goes forward? And of course, it should be good for the Canucks if Vertanen is better. And of course, if Archibald can bring some grit and some toughness to the lineup, a lineup that so, that's really sorely needs it. Okay, leave a comment below. I love to read and react. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Have a great day. God bless and go Canucks go.